Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly TV devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. For more than 150 years, Redemptorist missionaries all over the world have been entrusted with the responsibility of guiding and encouraging this wonderful devotion. In the Philippines, where this devotion is especially strong, Mary is known with great affection, simply as Mama Mary. Here in Canada, we gather every week in downtown Toronto at St. Patrick's Parish and the Shrine of Our Mother of Perpetual Health. And for more than 25 years, we have invited you to join us on TV every week for prayer, song, and reflection in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. And now, you can also find this weekly program online on our companion website, www.redemptress.tv. Joining us today are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our Mother of Perpetual Health. From around the world, the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Ireland, and Australia. From the Americas, including more than 100 parishes in Canada, also the United States, Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. All of us together, in our millions, are praying to our Mother of Perpetual Health. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking the intercession of Mary for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual health novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let us join our prayer today with this worldwide community of faithful who seek Mary's intercession and protection. Mother of perpetual health, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. 
you answered when called to be mother of our Lord. Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. So good evening, everyone, and thanks again for coming out for our second night of the Triduum. And if you were not here last night and you're here tonight, can you raise your hands? Let's just see a show of hands so we can welcome you. So a special welcome to all of you. If you haven't seen the fly and the posters, again, I'm Father Peter Hill. I'm a Redemptorist. I'm from the Caribbean island of Dominica and I reside in San Antonio, Texas at the moment where I'm in our formation house. And we come here tonight to just say two simple words. Thank you. Because if that's all we can ever say, that's the best prayer we can ever give. Thank you, Mary, our mother of perpetual help, for having us, your children. I want us to look at love. And uh, I want to ask you a simple question. When you hear the word love, what do you think of? I want to share some definitions of love from children, because you know children are very wise. So Rebecca, age eight, she says, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Danny, age seven, says, love is when mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him to make sure that it tastes okay. <laughs> and lastly, Jessica, age eight, says, you really shouldn't say, I love you, unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. People forget. What's your definition of love? 
because it's such a powerful four-letter word that we use, but we all mean different things when we say it, don't we? And so in our gospel today, it's all about love. But it's very interesting what Jesus does. He's talking to his disciples, but he doesn't really tell them what love is. He certainly tells them whom they should love. But what I find instructive is how Jesus ends the last line of the gospel. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. But what Jesus is trying to say to his disciples is, and to say to us is simply this. What were you made for? What is your goal? Who are you? What is your identity? And all of us were made for love, to love. That is our goal. That's who we are. As redemptors, you may hear this many times. We preach the great love, the crazy love that God has for all of us. Because this is who we are. That's how we were made. And so Jesus is saying to his disciples and to us, are we acting? Are we achieving this goal of love? Are we doing what we're called to do as Christians, which is to love? And so be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, I think simply means look at Jesus. Look at God. And how did God love? It was that perfect love because he never stopped loving. It was that perfect love because that's all God knows how to do, to love us. And that's our challenge. Can we love as we're made to love? Jesus says in the gospel, You've heard it say, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Did you hear that, church? Did you hear that? Love your enemies? Is this man for real? Love this person who was gossiping against me? Love this person who stabbed me in the back? Love this person who's been doing all these things to me? Yes. That's the challenge. Because if we can't love those who don't love us, then we're just like everybody else, and what are we witnessing to? The challenge is, we all are gonna have people we find difficult. We're all gonna have people we don't like. We're all gonna encounter people who are different from us. But the challenge is, if we're gonna witness to God in our lives, we have to be like Jesus. A Jesus who went out and loved everyone, regardless of who they were. When we saw him, he was eating with tax collectors, with prostitutes. He was all over the place. That's why he got into trouble. Because he was showing us a God of love who doesn't discriminate. And isn't that a message we need to hear so badly in today's world? Because there's so much hatred. We don't like the blacks, we don't like the Mexicans, we don't like the minorities, we don't like the gays, we don't like the lesbians, we don't like the migrants, we don't like the immigrants, and you just list it. And there's so much hatred in our world. And quite honestly, sometimes it comes from good people like us. And the gospel is challenging us if we say we're Christians, if we say we're people of faith, then we have to love even those who the world says are unlovable, because that's what makes us different. Think of someone who you find challenging, and hold this person up in prayer this evening, because that's our challenge. The second point I want to share with you is a story that I like to tell, and it's a little bit embarrassing. But I'm the first son, I'm the first child, and I'm the only son. And at the age of 17 is when I decided to enter the Redemptorist. And my mother cried for days. Because like so many of you, she wants priest, but not my son. 
But she had to do something which love does, which is sacrifice. When we truly love, it does cost us something. And if any one of you have ever truly loved, you know this from experience. Sometimes it's the pride, it's the ego, it's the selfishness, it's the patience, oftentimes it's the wallet. It costs us something when we truly love. And that's what God did. Sent us his only son out of love to show us how much he loves us and to show us how we're called to love. And lastly, when we truly love, like God, it empowers us. It empowers the other. When you look at when Zacchaeus encountered Jesus, and Zacchaeus changes, I'll give half of my property away, he becomes a better person. When he encounters the woman at, at, at the well, she's there, she runs, come see this man who told me everything about myself. She changes, she becomes better. When we truly love, we want the best for others so that they can live their best life, they can become better. And that's what God does for us. So church, I just want to end with the words of a song. I'm not going to sing it. I want to spare you from my great singing voice. Love. Love changes everything. Hands and faces, earth and sky. Love, love changes everything. How you live and how you die. Love makes fools of everyone. All the rules we made are broken. Yes, love, love changes everyone. Live or perish in its flames, love, Love will never, never let you be the same. If we truly love, we cannot be the same people. Our challenge, church, is to love perfectly like God, because that's who we are, and that's what we were made for. It's not easy, but it's possible because with God, all things are possible. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us for the Tritium, Three Nights of Prayers, Song, and Homily, in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help, offered every June at St. Patrick's Shrine Parish in downtown Toronto. Join us in person at St. Patrick's every Wednesday for the Perpetual Help Novena, and once a year for the Tritium in June. Check out St. Patrick's website for details and see you there. And now, final prayers and a message from the Redemptors of Canada. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother of perpetual help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity and strength and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly, vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your Spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, Thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. And thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools. Together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of all our people. Many of you have written us by email and by regular mail to let us know that you are praying with us and sometimes you let us know why you pray and for whom you pray. Your letters and emails are precious to us. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and each week we Redemptress offer a special Mass of thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all your intentions. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with donations from all our supporters across Canada, 
have kept the devotions on TV for more than 25 years. Every donation, large and small, allows us to continue this ministry to you. Please help us if you can. Make your check payable to Devotions TV or go online to our website www.redemptress.ca or www.redemptress.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out regularly. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on Devotions TV, write or email us at the address on your screen. So now, following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary of Perpetual Help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Devotions TV in honor of our Mother Perpetual Help, produced by the Redemptors of Canada, on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptors TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptors TV. Tell your friends, help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our Mother Perpetual Help.